It is past midnight. The remaining eight contestants have just seen Patrick eliminated. They are in shock. They are exhausted. They're expecting to go to their rooms, catch up on some sleep, and wake up to a new day, a new challenge. The last thing they're expecting is this. We have a challenge for you. We'd like you to choose two people who deserve a nice time. Could you do that now? OK, who wants it? Nice time. Honestly, if it's a nice time, I reckon this guy <coughs> really deserves a nice time. Just mate, stand up. Get your one now. Stand up. Yeah. What about you, Linda? Have a nice you guys time. Everyone's about it, sure. Yeah, no. Yeah. I say no. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. You're up there, sugar. Bye -bye. You so you guys. Be good. OK, ladies, if you could just move off, there's a car waiting for you. Thank you. Go have a nice time, guys. Yeah. For the rest of you, we have a challenge. In your Land Rover is a set of instructions to the next location. I'll see you there in 20 minutes. The six contestants are directed across town to a location where they are to become players in a human-style computer game. This is Richmond Mays, viewed from 70 metres above. Using video and radio communications, the contestants will direct each other through this labyrinth of passages. It will be dark and confusing, and at a time when they are exhausted, it will test them both mentally and physically. This test is worth $10,000. The task is simple. Divide yourself into three pairs. One person from each pair will sit in this chair and guide the other person through the maze. Whoever's in the maze will be in radio contact with their guide. Also in the maze are two hunters. The object is to make it to the end of the maze without being captured by the hunters or between the three groups to survive inside the maze for a total of three minutes. They pick their teams, Rocky and Jan, Ben and Abby, and Alan and Beverly. Their next choice is which team will go first. Jan, would you want to go first? We should, we should Not bring confident it home. About it, but Sorry? We should bring it home. You too, huh? Yeah, we so start to go out. You start. Oh, I don't want to start. Okay, so who will be first? We're going to be first. Alan. Who's running? I'm running. Alan, could you please come outside? All right, we'll just check your radio. Beverly, could you please uh, say hello to Alan? Oh, good day, Alan. Can you hear her through yep. your earpiece? Yep. You understand the rules? Yes. Your time starts now. Straight ahead, Alan. Keep going. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. No, no, back. No, straight ahead now. Keep going right to the end, then left. Oh. Go straight ahead, then right. Go straight ahead. And then just keep going straight ahead. Straight ahead. Straight ahead, that's right. Up. Round the corner. Now. You're right, you're right. Run for your life. Alan's been tagged. Sorry. 28 seconds. A short run for the first team. It's pretty hard because you couldn't see very well when you first jump out there. You can't see much. I had glanced at the screen and saw a way out right from the start. I was directing, um, but trying in the process to keep my eye on the other two, and suddenly there was one out of nowhere, as it were. Well done, mate. Hey, babe. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, it was me. I'm sorry. Don't, don't feel badly. It was me. I should have said to him, you know, turn around and run or something, go backwards, but yeah. it all happened so quickly. But hopefully these guys have been able to see something. That was almost like a practice run. And the, the rest of the team are going to try and, you know, make the effort to... Um... You also need the instructions to be done before you actually get to what you hit, because I almost broke my thumb hitting one of the end of the, the things. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I'm sorry. Instructions, instructions early. Yeah. Pre warning of things. Rather than, yeah. rather, rather than, than, rather than when, when you've actually hit yeah. something. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. And who's next? Hey. Ben. If you'd step outside with us, Helen, if you could come to us. Thank you, Ben. No, you just keep it. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's 28 seconds on the clock. They have to get it up to three minutes or get through the maze to win the challenge. 
kill us by starting on the corners. Right. So we're going to try and get, try them and them get them into the middle. They may not, remember. No, I know they, they may not, but I just thought chances. Left, you know, if you follow the ends, the ends are normally straight. If you're in the middle, it's more of we're a wordy thing to try and get them away. Give us as much time as we can. Do you know if the two taggers have contact with each other? Um, well, I mean, I suppose it really wouldn't be no, that much. Yeah. Can you hear them? No, I, I couldn't. I, I definitely couldn't hear the daggers. But you can uh, see right. we, need yeah, noise. Noise. we need to buy time. We need to buy time. Work out a path, and then just get me on the path, and we'll just go for a break. Any new tactics? Anything you've learned? Mate, bugger all. Absolutely nothing. No, just um, hell for leather. I think. Go nuts and see where it takes me. Howdy, Ben. How you going? Yeah, all we've got now is this fight. Yeah. I'll start you in a second. Okay. Yeah. Just wait. Here. Standing by. And Ben, are you ready? Yep. Go. Okay, Ben. Yep, go straight. No, no, turn back around, turn back around. Bring up. And take your first. Yep, no, go straight, straight down there. Yep, keep going straight. Straight? Keep going straight. You take a left now, take a left now. Take your right. Oh, shit. Turn back around, Ben. Turn back around. Now take your right. Take your first. Turn back around. Take your left. I'm going the same way. Turn back around, Ben. Oh, that was shocking. That was absolutely shocking. I just can't give directions. He's moving so fast, and then okay. sorry, guys. It's okay. Ben survived for 45 seconds. This took their total time in the maze to 1 minute 13. I found it really difficult because I had already chose a path and thought, no, I'm going to get him through that. He was just running so fast, I should have just said stop, and I actually got him cornered. If you had time to study it, it wouldn't have been hard. But we had no escape. Couldn't you just like run past him, mate? What are we doing? You can see absolutely nothing out there, though. Absolutely yeah. nothing. Why don't you? We'll see if Rock can hide from him in the half now. We should be okay. The success of the challenge is now in the hands of Jan and Rocky. Jan must lead Rocky to the end of the maze or keep him away from the hunters until the clock reaches three minutes. Maybe it's better for him to run into a dead end and just stay there. No, no, he'll, no? he'll get caught too busy. Those guys must have big heads, eh? This guy started here and the other guy started... Yeah, I know. Okay, okay. so he's And it's done up, it two times. It's up here all the way through, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just try and, try and get him in the middle, that's what I say. Just try and get him in the middle. 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 If we can make him dance around for a minute and a half, we've got him. Just hold it here for a second, Rocky. OK, you ready? I'm ready. All right. We'll just do a radio check. OK. Jan, speak to Rocky. Rocky, can you hear me? Yep. He can hear you. Right, that, that's loud enough? Yep. Yes. Stand here for one minute. I'll start you in a second. OK, mate? Good luck. It's all up to Rocky and Jan. If they can last one minute and 47 seconds inside the maze, they'll win $10,000 for the kitty. Their challenge is to get to the end of Richmond Maze without being captured by the hunters or, between the three teams, to last a total of three minutes inside the maze. Alan and Beverly lasted 28 seconds. Ben and Abby brought the time up to 1 minute 13. To win $10,000 for the group, Rocky and Jan must either get to the end of the maze or bring the total time up to three minutes. You ready, Rocky? Yep. You ready, Jan? I hope so. Go. Rocky, just stop where you are. Go straight left. Left now. Right. 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 Take your time. Take your time. OK, now turning left, turning left, turning left, turning right. Straight away. Turn left. Turn left. OK, good fella. Get, get left. Left, 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 left. OK, now right. Coming up to right. OK, left, 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 left. OK, go straight ahead, go straight ahead. Right, 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 right. Right, keep going. Uh, that's it, that's it, keep running. OK, coming up to a left, get left. Left, 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 left. OK, now right, coming up to right. Coming up to right, 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 right. Right, keep, continue on. Left, 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 left. left. OK, continue on there. Uh, 
talk to okay. me. Rocky, can you... Uh, right, just stay where you are, Rocky. Just stay where you are. Hope that... Guys, watch your time. Stay where you are. OK, now go ahead. Go ahead. That's it. That's it. Go, turn, turn, turn back. Turn back. Turn back. That's it, fella. Go left. Go left. Go left. Go left. Keep it going. Keep it going. Take your time, Rocky. Take your time. You've got plenty of time. Go left. Go left. OK, go left. Keep going. Keep going. Go left. Go left. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. OK, keep going. Straight hand going right. Now, right, 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 right. Keep going, keep going. Ten right, seconds. Right, right, right. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Congratulations. $10,000. Well done. I'm not sure if it was different tactics. Um, I went in, 15 seconds into I, I lost communication, and I, I had to make a quick call, and it was, do I go back and tell them I can't hear, or do I go on and give it a go on my own? So I went blind, and then I got another 15 seconds, and then it dropped off again. Talk to me. The first two times, I guess, they were, you know, experimental, and we worked out that the, we probably wouldn't get to the other end, we found a route that we could run around and around in circles with in the middle. When, I, when he brought me back in, I was ecstatic because the time was up. <laughs> See the way that guy takes the corners. Oh, wasn't he great in following the directions? Mm. Just remarkable. He was, am he was amazing. He's such a runner. Yeah, he's, he's a runner. He's an athlete. I had no sound. He had no sound. I, I had about three words. No, oh, yes, I know. Oh, fantastic. Well, the task is complete. You win $10,000. While the challenge was successful, there was doubt over just how the game was won. Jan had studied the maze, so why didn't she lead Rocky to the finish? OK, good fella. Get, get left, 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 left. If she directed Rocky to take the second left instead of the first left, Rocky would have been led to the finish and the challenge would have been won. And what exactly happened with the two-way radio? Who, between Jan and Rocky, is lying? Rocky said he didn't hear my communication to him. Yet he followed every single instruction that I did. Every single instruction. If Bev can operate the bloody thing, then anybody can. Jan's a switched on girl, and you know, it certainly threw a lot of doubt in my mind. Um, the sad thing was that everyone thought it was me that was pretending not to hear. Is he trying to make himself a suspect? Or is he casting suspicion on me? Because I know what happened, I had to sit back and have a good look at it. Eight hours after finishing the labyrinth, three of the contestants are taken to wine country, north of Launceston. Rocky, Jan and Alan will have a relaxing day tasting Tasmanian wine. Linda and Josephine, well rested after their night off, will spend the day at a Tasmanian cheese farm. And Ben, Abby and Beverly will spend a day in beer lovers paradise, a brewery. For now, they all think they've simply earned themselves a day off. All eight contestants are learning about Tasmanian wine, cheese and beer. What they don't know is that they're going to be tested on their newly acquired knowledge. Dr Andrew Perry is an award-winning winemaker. You normally see wine tasters swirling their wine around. And the, one of the reasons you do that is to get a bit of wine up onto the glass. You can see some uh, tears or legs falling down. You see that? Although the contestants haven't been told that they'll be tested, they do suspect it. 
Next step is the smell. And I'm smelling Alan it again to get has the advantage of having glass completed glass a wine for the course. First time, and that first impression is, what is it? Tastes like the Vegemite jar. Okay, we've got a Vegemite. Any other bids? My mother used to make mock raspberry jam with tomatoes. Okay. And that's what it smells like. Okay, a bit of tomatoes. That's mm. a good comment. I go cherries. Okay. Then finally, the, the taste, which is the, um, the final assessment for a winemaker. And if a wine tastes uh, around the edge of the tongue, it tastes zingy, fresh, a bit like uh, green apple, then you've probably got a cool climate wine. Tasmanian wines, by and large, are lighter coloured reds than, say, the warmer regions producing the heavier reds. Oh, my God. Wow. Josephine and Linda, meanwhile, are at the Ashgrove Cheese Farm. If you're a mouse, you'd be in heaven. The first thing when you're going to taste cheese is that you should always start with a mild cheese. Mild cheese is young cheese. So the longer you leave it, the stronger the flavour is going to become. So today we might start with the Rubicon Red. That's the mildest of the ones that we've got here for you to taste. Thanks. That's beautiful. Mmm. Nice. So this is mature cheddar, a really okay. nice, firm, textured 12-month-old cheddar. Slightly nutty flavour. This one is the Tasty Lancashire. Now, this is a specialty of ours. It's a really acid cheese, mm. very sharp and tangy. Mm. Now, this one's 12 months old, and a really good Tasty Lancashire should lift the roof off the back of your mouth. Which is brewing right now. <laughs> <laughs> And the first part is a bit like wine. You sort of swirl it around in the glass and have a sniff and just appreciate the odour of the beer. Ben, and Abby and Beverly uh, are being uh, given a crash yeah, course in beer making you'll, by you'll master you'll brewer you'll Graham you'll Little. Uh, Note for this is quite a strong odour, but well balanced. Yeah. Uh, a good balance between the malty taste and, and the bitterness. Well, one point of difference is that lighter flavour, the, the, the lighter balance. It um, goes well with all foods. Um, and it's, none of the flavours are overpowering. They're all in a, in, a, in a fairly good balance. This is a much more robust beer than the premium, a much stronger flavour. Um, it's got uh, quite a deal of uh, crystal malt in it. Um, and it uh, comes in at a higher alcohol content than the premium. <laughs> <laughs> Their relaxing day had come as a relief. <laughs> and dinner that night was to be even more of a special treat. They'll be dining at the magnificent Clarendon House. Even dressing up was a luxury. They had returned to their hotel to find evening clothes waiting for them in their rooms. It was a welcome change after nearly a week of living out of backpacks. Welcome to the manor. Would you like to have a look inside? Come with me. So, was this a little more relaxing, a little more enjoyable day than oh, say, the last last year? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice to have a treat and a nice day out. Despite the lavish surroundings and the pretense of calm, they are all still searching for clues as to what will happen next. Enjoy. Is your PS? You've got a challenge on the bottom of that or what? <laughs> We're not bungee jumping after this pitch, are we? <laughs> it's one we've got new skirts for. <laughs> We are always sort of expecting the unexpected, so it got to the point where you thought, can I please let me just enjoy this one dinner, even if it's the last supper? I knew this bloke, he was so paranoid, he thought the bloke in front of him was following him. The more it goes on, the more you suspect people for just different things, um, things that you didn't look at before that they've done or said, and now you do. Well, we're all very glad that you've had a good day and it's great that you've had a treat. But of course, with everything in this, there is a point. We have a challenge for you. The challenge is simple and it is worth $10,000. Three of you today became experts on beer, three connoisseurs on wine and two on cheeses. Two of every three of the items on the table are Tasmanian. You're familiar with them. One is an imposter. It's from the mainland. To win the challenge and the $10,000, all 
all three groups must correctly identify the imposter. You have two minutes each. We'll begin with the cheeses. And you can start now. One of these eight people is the mole. He or she will be doing what they can to make the group fail the challenge. But the mole must remain hidden. The risk of exposure is high. Come on, Come on. Come on girls. Come on, girls. Come on. One of the cheeses is from New South Wales. Two are from Tasmania. <laughs> that one's bringing back memory. <laughs> To identify the odd one out, Linda and Josephine will have to remember what they've learned. Cut the cheese. And a really good tasty Lancashire should lift the roof off the back of your mouth. While Josephine was an enthusiastic cheese taster, she's now reluctant to make a decision. 145. Linda is forced to choose a line. 10. Quick. Quick, quick. Five, four, three. I'm sorry, which one is the imposter? A. A is the imposter. Thank you. The beer test next. You have two minutes. Your time starts now. Go Ben. Come on, Dad. Ben, Abby and Beverly are sampling two beers from the Bogues Brewery. Oh, I just it. Just take a sip. The third beer is from Victoria. So the first part is a bit like wine. You sort of swirl it around in the glass and have a sniff and just appreciate the odour. There's a, quite a marked difference between that and the, and the Bogues Premium. A stronger multi note uh, coming through. Come on, oh, Bev. Get in there. That's it, girl. That's it. That's it. That's it. Well that's it. You stand at a minute. Yeah. Well. Come on. Come on, Bab. Come on, Abby and Beverly are not beer drinkers, yet there is little conflict in their decision making. The three are unanimous. You ready to make a decision? Yeah. Yep. You think it's B, B right? B. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to wine, and your time begins now. Rocky, Jan and Alan have been presented with two wines from the Piper's Brook Vineyard. The third wine is from a vineyard in South Australia. A good drop, that one. No. And if a wine tastes uh, around the edge of the tongue, it tastes zingy, fresh, a bit like uh, green apple, then you've probably got a cool climate wine. The Tassie red tend to be a little bit lighter in colour and so the uh, warmer regions are producing the heavier reds. 45 seconds. 20 seconds. The three waste time thinking about the glasses instead of tasting the wine. These glasses this, are hopeless. Nah, nah, they're waterproof glasses, mate. Yeah, they are. We're yeah. not getting the tears on the legs. They're tricking us. That's all right. Step in the dark. That's all right. With only seconds remaining, all three will need to make a quick decision. There's $10,000 resting on it. Linda and Josephine have decided which of their cheeses is not Tasmanian. Ben, Abby and Beverly have made their choice about the beers. Rocky, Jan and Alan must now choose which of their wines is not from Tasmania. To win $10,000 for the kitty, all three groups must be right. They have seconds left to make their decision. Well, that does it for me. I go for number three. Number three. Mm. Number three. three. Number three. Three. Number three. Number three. Number three. Three. Is the, Im the imposter. imposter. Three is the imposter. Well done. You've all answered within the time. We'll have a look at the results, shall we? We started with the cheese. Two were Tasmanian. One an imposter. 
Which was your choice? Jose. Jose. Correct. Good Lord. The beer group answered, what was it? B. B? B is absolutely correct. And the wine group, make it three. Congratulations. A perfect sweep. Fantastic. $10,000. Well done. The day has been a success. There is now $45,000 in the kitty. But before the evening's over, there is one more question to be answered. Before we finish dinner, and thank you all for your company, I'd like you to choose two people who enjoy the sound of their own voices. <laughs> Could you do that now? You have 30 seconds. Hello, one is. Rocky and Ben. Rocky and Ben. Well put. Rocky and Ben? Rocky and Ben. Gentlemen, you'll be given a challenge in the morning. Thank you all very much for your company. Thank Enjoy. You. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Ben and Rocky left Launceston ahead of the other contestants. They have driven to Tasmania's west coast. Their challenge is to organise a karaoke evening at the local hotel and to raise $1,000 for the Kids with Cancer charity, Canteen. It is now midday. They have until 8 that evening to raise the money. Tonight, we've got a karaoke night. Woo! Every, every it's Saturday... Gonna be a lot of fun. It's going to be charity. It's going to be towards kids with cancer. It's called Canteen, okay? Canteen? Yep. So we're going to charge a couple of bucks to get in. That's it. If you can come in, we've got the amazing Beverly. Mrs. Beverly? Mrs. Australia 932. Well, you promise? Well, I don't know. It depends on what else comes up in the industry. Rocky has a background in marketing. Their first task, lunch. Well, you're the marketing guru, so I might need a few points. The thing about marketing this product is if you build it, they will come. You know what that means? Oh, that means it... I don't actually know what that means, but that's what I just thought. It sounds good, though, mate. That, that sounds very the, nice. The 3,000 people, we only need 200 of them. If we get 200 here and we get five, we've got 1,000. The show is called The Intruders, East Coast's Favourite Sons. Yeah. Rocky and Ben's Intruders show is taking shape. Last live performance before going overseas, do you think, or not? even if their plans are a little ambitious. We might take this overseas. Marketing plan finalised, they hit the road. First stop, Gordon River Cruises, in search of a prize to auction. So all we thought we'd do is come and see you and see if we could maybe get a great prize right. to give away as a bit of an enticement to get this like many people prize in. Or, or, or maybe something as first prize for the best thing on the night or something. Oh, right. What you know? would you like? Oh, uh, $1,000? Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. But I mean, I could offer you, say, six free cruises. Oh, that'd be unbelievable. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be. Well, it's a terrific start. We've got no complaints there. Heaps okay. of prizes uh, for the best... Performers. They've set the cover charge at six dollars. If a hundred people turn up, they'll still have to raise another four hundred dollars from the auctions. Let's go and do what we do best, mate. Bullshit. Sounds good to me. Have a read of that. If you'd like to join us there tonight, come in for a, you know a couple of beers and a good laugh. The amazing Bev. The amazing Beverly. Dubbo's 1932. Beauty pageant second runner-up. We've got dinners to give away cruises. for two cruises. We've but all proceeds every cent to go to kids with cancer. Can't okay. Just one more time. Rocky and all Ben proceeds. have been working as a team, but as soon as they have a captive audience, they start to work against each other. Guys, can I have one sec? Um, Rocky and myself tonight, um... I've got a Sorry, um, let's carry over. Sorry. Um... Let's carry over. It's too loud there. Oh, I can't even explain myself. <laughs> uh, what we're doing tonight, we're hosting um, a karaoke show. It's just a local hotel. Good on you, mate. Thanks so much. Half-price drink tonight. Thanks so much. Cheers, mate. I'll just give you one of these things. Have a read of that and just join what you think. Thank you so much. Six o'clock tonight. We'll see you over there. I'd like you to just read that for me, please. That's right. Yep, so true, Rocky. How are you doing? With dozens of potential customers passing them by, Rocky and Ben suddenly fall silent. How are you doing? Hey, Dama. 
This man looks like the old camp. The crowds having dispersed, Rocky and Ben are now at odds over how best to capitalise on the sale of the donated cruisers. You say, yeah, cruisers value at $92. We're going to get this tonight for $70, ladies and gentlemen. I can guarantee they will. No, 50. We'll see if they can get 50. for them. You start off at going, start going, 70. Going, knock it down to 50, mate. No, Talk, you, no, you work your way up in an auction. No, yeah, but I'm saying, if, if, if you don't auction it, you just say $70, no, or well, 60 bucks. If you don't, just sell it. I don't know, mate. We won't see. See how it goes, mate. Well, I reckon that what we should probably do is uh, go back, have a shower, That's what I'm get changed, then get back down here, try and drum up a bit more business. I'll run some more things yeah. out. All right. Get the car, we'll go jump in the car, take the car up. Yeah. Back at the hotel, so Rocky informs car? Beverly of her starring role. <laughs> but it, look, there are a lot of people, Bev, that are coming just to see you. I've got to, oh, I can tell I've got to be perfectly honest with you. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, the you know, 32. <laughs> yeah. We've told them, we've told them... the year wrong, it's 31, Rocky. We've told them how easy you are on the eye. Mm. All, right. All right. Today has a special yeah. significance. Yeah. Because everyone gets to phone home for the first time in a week. I have no idea where we are in Tasmania, but it's absolutely gorgeous down here. And it's heaps hot. I went skydiving. Oh, the competition itself, well, they've already had two people eliminated and I've managed to stick around until tonight. Now, I may be eliminated tonight, as the expression is, in which case you'll see me tomorrow, hun. And the, the mole is there to kind of sabotage everything? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. And if I don't figure out by about a few hours' time, I could be uh, I could be seeing you before too long. Have you been remembering my kisses? Have you been catching my kisses? Yeah, lots or not? You caught them all. I sent you infinity. I miss you, baby. These phone calls will be their only contact with home for many days to come. But one of the eight won't just be phoning home. After the elimination tonight, one of the eight will be going home. I really hope that I'm not going tonight. I really do. I don't want to leave. I'm having too much fun. I keep looking at the charts. I mean, there's eight people left. So there's a one in seven chance that I am going, because obviously the mother will be staying. Just wish me luck for tonight because I want to be here tomorrow to talk to you again. I want to tell you more about it and I've got my fingers crossed that, uh, that I get back and we have a bit of a chat. So I'll be looking out for you. Bye. How you doing, fellas? You've obviously read the flies, you know what's going on? It is six o'clock. They have two hours to raise $1,000 for charity. If they succeed, They'll win five thousand dollars for the kitty. A few more people. Don't take two fifty. I'll give you fifty cents. Hamas Hotel. Just come on over. Have a hot. They enlist the help of all the other contestants in their bid to pull a crowd. Why aren't you down here in the pub having a drink? We've got cheap drinks going in here for the next uh, fifteen minutes or so. They're raising money for a good cause, and there's plenty of enthusiasm. But one of the eight is the mall. And maybe he or she is trying to sabotage the challenge, trying to prevent the group from raising the money. It goes, it goes towards um, kids with cancer. Oh, yeah. So I'm just wondering if, if you'd like to make a, make a donation. Yeah, well, we'll see how we go. Just a few dollars, as much as, yep, that's all we've always asked. Everyone says, yeah, I've heard about it, but, um, but no one's coming in. Hard crowds, hardly the word. Stingy bunch of whatevers. To keep things moving, Rocky starts the auction. $50 for the cruise and the girls going once, $50 going twice, $50 three times, well done, mate. You just bought yourself a full day cruise for two people, 50 bucks, and the... With 40 people so far paying the $6 entry fee and $400 raised from the auctions, they're getting close to their $1,000 target. But they haven't got long to go. We've got about um, 20, 25 minutes left. Um, it's... Tucky, you're looking good with that one, mate. We, we should, you're a champion. You're going to wrap it up yet? You're, you're, you're happy to auction that off tonight? This is Tucky's auctioning this off tonight for us and all proceeds to charity. Tucky's a local craftsman. 
He's decided to donate a table he's made out of 200-year-old Hewan pine. In the closing minutes before the 8pm deadline, this auction could win the group the challenge. Three hundred dollars for Tucky's table, but it wasn't enough to push the group over the line. We got nine hundred and thirty-four dollars. Well done. Good for the kids. Thank you. Thank you. Great for canteen, mate. Unfortunately, not enough. Bad luck. Better luck next time. Thanks. They may have lost the $5,000 prize, but it had been a successful two days. They'd raised their kitty by $20,000. I think everyone's, you know, still getting on OK and we're all still pretty much working as a team, but at the end of the day, there's a mole among us. I have trouble sleeping. I just toss and turn all night, just thinking of who the mole could be. So it's constantly on my mind, 24 hours a day, mole, mole, mole. Once again, it was time for the questionnaire. 20 questions about who the mole is and what he or she has been doing. The person who scores lowest will be eliminated. Josephine, just the way she's been in the last few days. She's getting depressed about something and I don't know if it's being away from home or the fact that she's the mole and she doesn't want to, you know, she doesn't want to get too close. I still think of it as a male. Every, like, half day I sort of change my mind over which male, but at the moment I'm thinking Alan and I'm locked into him and he'll, he'll talk about different tasks and say slightly negative things about them, not obviously negative, but just enough to be a little bit off-putting. So Beverly's still up there. I mean, it's amazing the number of things that go wrong when, when Beverly's around. And Ben, that's, Ben is still a dark horse, but he's so out there that um, a lot of what he does goes unnoticed. Maybe Josephine, because I never used to suspect her, I was think, when why on earth haven't I suspected her? And I think Jan's always been high on my list. And the people that I've had high on my list before, I've been able to eliminate through little aspects, and I just haven't found any any reason to eliminate her. Welcome back. The end of another episode. It's been a successful one. Twenty thousand dollars more in the kitty, and a grand total of forty-five thousand dollars. Well done. But now again. We stand at a junction. Tonight someone leaves us. Tomorrow we will be seven. I'd like to go first. Linda? Jan? Rocky, we have to go. That's from Laura, I taught you guys. Love you all, okay? Thank you, Rock. They're good. Just this way. I've never met a person that put so much into everybody else. Yes. What he did. Yes. It's one of the most amazing people I've ever met. I would never have been met anybody like him except for this challenge. I 
think what we're all pretty much feeling is that Rocky was the one that made us do everything. We didn't really have a choice. You jump out the plane, you yeah. <laughs> you chase the hostage. You... That's what I was saying. He made you laugh through it, didn't he? He was the one that kind of brought us all together. Yeah, he brought us all together. Thank you. Great meeting you. Yep. Your best memory? Um, uh, motivating the group. Yeah. yeah. You did a great job. Thanks. Thanks for spending the time with us, mate. My pleasure. And then there were seven. Six contestants and the mole.